So I'd like to bring you up to speed today on a couple of the new developments that we've brought to the natural perils directory over the last year. Some of these have actually only uh, been signed off in the last week or so, uh, so I'm still very excited about them. Up until recently, when we've talked about subsidence in the UK, the dominant form of substance that we're concerned with is clay-related subsidence. So there, what we're looking at is two key questions generally. One, can the soil shrink and swell with changing moisture conditions? Clay soils typically can, particular clay soils, uh, more than others. Some of these are up to 20% volume change as they lose water, so it's pretty dramatic. So the first question is, can the soil shrink and swell with changing moisture conditions? The second question that we consider is, will they? Is the weather going to be such that we sell a lot of ice creams? Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be dry? And are these soils going to lose their water? If they do, that shrinkage, that potential shrinkage, can be realized. Now what we can do is ask a third question, and that is referring to the kind of trees and large vegetation that is a really important part of our urban environment. What I don't want people to do is go away and cut down trees once I told you this. But some trees on some soils in some weather conditions are problematic. And if you talk to the Association of British Insurance, uh, the ABI will, will, will tell you that a large number of the household subsidence claims do have large trees in close proximity to houses. But which ones are they? And until now, we haven't been able to say that. But now what we can do, working with Blue Sky, who are a remote sensing company, what they've done is they've mapped the location and the height of every tree over three meters high across England and Wales, and they're rolling that out across Scotland. They've done it within 50 meters of every property across Scotland at the moment. So now what we can say, is there a risk from the soil? Is there a risk from the weather? And is there a risk from the tree? And how do they all play together in terms of actually the, the risk that subsidence forms to the house just behind us? So that is a really key development. Now we've been testing this data, not with insurance claims so far, uh, but we've been working with Anglian Water and looking at the impact on burst water mains uh, in soils, uh, under trees and not under trees. And it's been really encouraging to see how these data sets play so well together. Um, we always thought, yes, trees are, are, are more likely to dewater the soil and lead to, to pipe failures through to ground, you know, because of ground movement. And this signal did start to come out. If we looked at it in aggregate, pipes under trees don't really burst a lot more than pipes outside of trees. But once we start segmenting the soils up on their shrink swell potential, that's when we start to see this clear signal of tree presence coming in and acting, increasing that burst rate on pipes in those high shrink swell potential soils. So it's really exciting development. I'm very, very, very happy to bring that to us today. Um, the second development that I want to tell you about is kind of more weather related. What's the weather like now? Well, it's a lovely day. What's it going to be like in 20 years, in 30 years, in 50 years time? And what's the impact that that is going to have on subsidence? So we know, yes, soil shrink and swell, that's important, and the weather is important too. So by looking into the future, using not a crystal ball, but some very clever climate prediction models from the UK CP, the UK climate projections, um, we can give a probabilistic framework for the climate now and also into the future. So we can look at the 10th centile and the 50th centile or the median and uh, up to the 90th. So we get a, a framed view of, of the likely range of risks that we could encounter as we go forward through time. Um, and the general trend with these is unfortunately an increasing risk, but it's better to know that than to be caught unawares. So particularly for those organizations who have long-term uh, interests in asset management, uh, the things that you're putting in the ground now, you want them to last for, for more than 50 years, it's a good idea 
to look, if we can, at these models and see how that risk is going to change as we go forward through time. So that briefly are, are, are the two key developments I want to talk to you about today. Um, and if you have any questions, yeah. do get in touch with us. Uh, we're always very, very happy to, to talk and explain our models, um, how they're built and how they can help you in your work. Brilliant. Thank you very much.